Thank you for inviting me, and thank you for the wonderful introduction. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> as you guys already know, I'm, my name is Colin Adams, and I am 11 years old. I was born to September 27, 2004, and I am a cancer survivor. When I was two and a half years old, I was diagnosed with stage four neoblastoma. Neoblastoma is the most common extracranial, meaning outside of the head, tumor found in children. More than 650 cases are found each year in the U.S. When found in early stages, it has a high success rate per year, about 86%. In stage four, there is only a 34 to 68% chance of survival for five years. I found my tumor in April 2007 at CMCH. I had been running a low-grade fever for about a month and started waking up in the middle of the night crying. My mom had taken me to the doctor three separate, separate times and he always had a different reason. Oh, he has an ear infection. Oh, he has trouble. So, when I started complaining of belly pain, the reason was, oh, he just needs food. <laughs> Finally, when the fever was not going away after two different antibiotics, my mom took me to the ready care and told the doctor there that there was something wrong with me and she wasn't leaving until he figured it out. Chest and belly x-ray later, we were told I had pneumonia and I was admitted to the hospital. I had no symptoms of pneumonia. Two days into my stay at the hospital, my pain was worsening and a CT scan was ordered. That's when they found a tumor the size of a softball surrounding my adrenal glands near the area above my kidneys. And I was sent to U of M Children's Hospital, Mott's Children's Hospital. That was April 3rd, 2007. Most of what I know about my cancer and my treatment are things that my mom and dad told me. I don't remember the pain of hearing cancer, but I do remember the tube saying on my chest. I don't remember the many band changes. My mom said I would cry and that I hated them. I don't remember feeling sick, but I do remember the pokes and IVs from blood draws. I remember having lots of tests where I was taken into a room and put on a table. And they put a mask on my face to put me to sleep. I remember the mask gave me. But when I woke up, I always got popsicle. <laughs> When I turned five, I didn't get my mask anymore from my scans. I was just strapped to a table and I watched the movie. Mom said that I had scans every three months for the first two years and every six months for the last three years. In total, my treatment was six rounds of chemotherapy, a 10 and a half hour surgery to remove my cancer, lots of small surgeries to replace the lines in my chest, a stem cell transplant, where I was in isolation for 30 days, a, bunch of, a whole bunch of blood transfusions, 17 radiation treatments, and six months of oral chemo. I lost part of my hearing because of chemo. I remember the nurses playing with me. I remember dressing up as Batman in the playroom and running up and down the hallway with my AV pool. I remember playing hockey in the hallway. I remember with my mom told me that my friend Noah from the playroom had died. He had the same cancer as me. I remember a story that mom and grandma told me about how I would say that Jesus would talk to me and I would talk to him. During a scary time when the doctors were scheduled a second surgery because my scans kept coming back showing more tumor, I told mom that I didn't know why I had to have the surgery because Jesus took my cancer away. She asked me how I knew, and I told her that Jesus told me so. My whole family, grandparents, aunts, uncles, mom and dad, went to the hospital for what was to be an all-day surgery. Two or three hours into the surgery, the surgeon called mom and dad back to the operating room. They had done scans to find where the tumor was exactly, and was surprised to see, to find that the wide area of my skin was nothing but my adrenal glands. Jesus had taken my cancer away. The story goes that mom and dad came out of the operating room with the biggest grins. 
they told the family that I was with. <laughs> in the recovery room, Mom told everyone the same story. They were all crying by the end, but it gave all the families hope. Hope that maybe that their child would be healed too. I went right home, after my popship, of course. <laughs> I never stayed overnight in the hospital again because of cancer. I was invited to my first relay in 2008, and I came as a survivor still fighting the battle. I just rode in the stroller with my mom pushing me. But after that, we started coming every year. Go, Camp Cohen. I relay for a cure, so that other kids and their families never have to go through what me and my family did because cancer touches more than the person it attacks. It touches all of those close to them. I want to thank each and every one of you for the time and energy you give to help my dream a reality. A world without cancer. A world where my families and friends are not taken away because of cancer. I have hope that one day we will find a cure. Each and every one of you are making a difference. I want to encourage you with this quote by our Buckminster Fuller. Never forget that you are one of a kind. Never forget, no matter how old, no. Never forget if there weren't any need for you, and all you really need just to be on the street, you wouldn't be here in the first place. And never forget, no matter how overwhelming life challenges and problems seem to be, that one person can make a difference in the world. In fact, it is always because of one person that all the changes that matter in the world come about. So be that one person. I'm going to be. So let's kick off 2016 Relay. Together, we'll keep fighting to find a cure. Thank you.